Hi, welcome back to the shop. This is going to be some kind of an R&D episode. Uh, for an upcoming very small project, I want to give, um, I want to try to engrave uh, graduations like on the scale, but very small. Uh, my, I, I want to engrave lines that are only one tenth of a millimeter apart from each other. And that's what we're going to try to achieve in this uh, installment. First thing that comes to my mind. Okay, second thing. First thing that comes to my mind is using the CNC. And the second thing that comes to my mind is using the engraving machine. And the engraving machine gives, we, gives me with the mechanical reduction of, um, of um, length should give me enough resolution to get such fine uh, engravings. Okay, we're not going to engrave this, uh, this graduation with a normal rotating cutter. Uh, with an engraving cutter, single cutter or something like that. We're going to use this tool. This uh, um, I made this some time ago. And this is a um, spring-loaded carbide point for drag engraving. And um, it's, it, it's a pretty simple build. Let's take me this apart. Okay, this is the carbide tip. It's a uh, three millimeter carbide. It has a tip ground on with, I think 80 degrees is what I ground it to. And it has a small brass ring lock tighted on on the end. And that's the needle. Then we have the housing that's six millimeter drill rod the front is drilled and reamed for um, three millimeter very close fit on the on the carbide tip and the back side is uh, drilled for clearance and tapped here the carbide needle goes in goes into the front Then there is this spring, which I think is out of an uh, out of a pen, and a grub screw or warm screw or set, no set screw set screw. The uh, spring sits on the uh, on the end of the set screw. And this gets screwed into the end of this tool. And don't cross thread it. Screw it in. And don't kick the tripod. And now you have a spring loaded carbide tip or needle with a pointy end and the way you use this is you use it in the non-rotating spindle you chuck it up in the color chuck of your engraving machine your milling machine or whatever and you bring it in contact with the workpiece bring it in contact with the workpiece so um, you preload the spring, then you drag it along the path you want to engrave, and this gives you. This is like a, this is like a scriber, a metal scriber, but for a machine. And this gives you a very, very nice clean uh, engraving. Okay, I'm going to make the template out of this. Um, six millimeter lexane that I had the strip and the scrap bin and that's perfectly for that use. 
Um, I will make the template 100 millimeters long with um, divisions every 10 millimeters and divisions every every millimeter. So um, scaled down by 10. This will be 10 millimeters. The, these lines will be apart one millimeter and the smallest lines will be one tenth of a millimeter apart. And um, now we're going to cut these uh, these lines in the template. We're just going to do this on the pantograph with the fixed um, pantograph mechanism, just using the um, X and Y movement of the table. Okay, I just engraved my uh, graduation onto the piece of uh, Lexan with a 60 degree single lip cutter that I ground before. I put a long line every 50 millimeter, shorter lines every 10 millimeters, every 5 millimeter a medium sized line and what will later be the one tenth of a millimeter lines. These are the shortest, but keep in mind this, this whole thing, this is 10 millimeters long and this will be reduced by factor 10. So this is going to be about this size. So um, the engraving worked pretty well. The Lexan cuts very good. If you put a drop of cutting oil on it, then it, it doesn't build up a burr or anything like that. It's, it's very well behaving. Okay, I pre prepared a piece of steel. I took it, I polished it on um, sequentially finer grit uh, emery paper, starting by 240 and uh, over 1000 grit and then to the 3M super finishing films um, in different grits. And then I took it and heat blued it. Um, and now we're going to cut our graduations into the oxide layer. Um, I heat blued it so the, the scratch markings of the graduations will highlight and um, I want to wear it thin layer of paint on the metal so my lines show up very fine and the thinnest line of air quotes color I could think of would be heat bluing just heat the metal until it reaches a a bluish color um, and then quench it in water to freeze it to freeze the color um, and this should give 
a good uh, foundation for our graduations. Okay, I set up the workpiece on the table, clamped it down, put my spring-loaded scriber into the collet chuck and now we give it a shot. I will bring the camera in a bit closer so you can see the actual uh, scribing action. Okay, that was the first line. It's very hard to see on camera, but we will have a go and see how it comes out. First, I will cut the lines that are one millimeter apart on the um, on the final scale. Okay, I think you can see the graduations pretty good. I will change the camera angle slightly so you can see it a bit better. Okay, now you have a better look at the graduations and they come out incredible fine. I think uh, this might work out for the project I have in mind. Now we cut the, um, the 0.5 millimeter lines between the one millimeter lines. And now the important thing now we try to put a line every tenth of a millimeter that's um, about uh, five thousandths of an inch for the non-metric persons out there Okay, here you can see the graduations we just uh, drag and graved into the piece of steel and it's 10 millimeters long and it has a line every tenth of a millimeter and I have my small magnifier here and maybe this will show up in the camera. Yeah, this works sorta. You can see that it's Pretty fine. I will. I made a photo and I will show a still picture right now. And as you can see, the engraving is not too bad. Okay, as you saw in the still picture, there are some errors in this scale. The actual um, distance between the lines is not. Um, regular and um, you can see it up here in the image it's uh, I marked it red so you can see it um, you see that the um, distance between the lines is different and the reason for that is it's my fault I messed it up um, when I machined this template First I cut the uh, longer lines and the, the 5 mm lines and the 1 mm lines and I took a pretty deep cut with the uh, engraving bit and then I crammed in the 
lines that were only one millimeter apart, the what will later be the one tenth of a millimeter graduation. And because I did that, the the lines next to the big lines, the short lines, almost uh, drop off into the big lines, and that made my stylus. The the, um, the stylus I followed the template on the engraving machine uh, walk over also slightly and that caused the variations in my in the scale I engraved on this piece here it is um, that's no problem I can fix that I make an uh, will make a new template all the engravings cut at the same depth. This was kind of an error. First I was thinking that I will cut all the graduations that deep, but that wouldn't... The space between the lines would... Uh, it, it just wouldn't have worked out, so I had to draw, pull back the engraving bit and take like the back, light the passes and that made these lines next to the big lines pretty much useless and that's what, what can be seen in this graduation here. Um, I did another test where I only cut the lines graduations that were five tenths of a millimeter apart. Um, we'll show a still picture up here and you can see that this comes out pretty nice and I have another still picture next to a steel rule or steel scale of course um, comparing my graduations to the um, commercial made scale and I think mine is not too bad. The lines are super fine and the distance fits. So this process might work out and I only have to make a new template. But that's not a real problem. This takes about this takes about an hour to make by hand on the engraving machine. I could also do it on the CNC machine if maybe I will do it on the CNC just because it's <laughs> you have to cut a line, retract the tool, move over and so on and so on and so on. Such kind of repetitive work is perfectly the right thing for a CNC machine. So we will see. I hope you enjoyed this um, R&D episode and thank you for watching.